<coughs> so the letter I chose was a, it contains the file number 52. It's a letter from Kalani Moku. Anybody know who Kalani Moku was? <laughs> <laughs> Pretty important person. Okay. <coughs> Sometimes it's termed the premier of that time. It was critical to the missionary effort. Okay. Without Kalani Moku, I think they probably would have had a lot harder time getting started. But anyway, <coughs> we know very little about him. Because all that we know about him was other people wrote about him. But here we have a letter that he wrote. So it gives us a chance to see what kind of person is writing this letter. So here's a letter that they translated. And we'll just kind of read it through quickly. Okay. <coughs> no criticism. This is hard work. Okay. Here is my greetings to you, Mr. Bingham. And this is the, the English translation. I didn't want to really take that much time. To, uh, but here's my message to all of you, our missionary teachers. I'm telling you that I have not seen you wrong. If I see you to be wrong, I will certainly tell you all. <coughs> no, all that is needed is for you folks to give us literacy. We learn it. We give us the word of God. And when we feed it, our women are prohibited. For we have learned the word of God, then the foreigners come to fix them doing damage to our <coughs> land, the foreigners of America and Britain. Lest you all become angered, we are to blame for your wrong, and not all of your foreigners. Here is my message according to the word of Jehovah. I have given my heart in God, and my body, and my spirit. I have devoted myself to the Church of Jesus Christ. Having, have a look, Mr. Bingham and company, at my message. And if you want to write my message to America, to our chief, that is up to you. Okay, so... Don't tell me who did it. You can point to put the abrasion. Okay, so <coughs> again, who is Kalani Moku? Okay, what is he? <coughs> this is an important question. So he is not the highest ranking of the king, but yet Ka'ahu Manu, who is the highest ranking at that time, and uh, Kamehameha III, Kauki Oli, they defer to him. They always defer to him. And the question I always ask, why? Right? Why? Okay, so let's go back and retranslate some this. So from the first one, here's my message to all of you, our missionary teachers. I'm telling you that I'm not seeing you wrong. If I see you, you're wrong. I will certainly entertain you. Greetings to you, Mr. Bingham. Here are my thoughts to you, missionary teachers. And I say to all of you, I see there's no wrong in you. If I did see wrong in you, I would have told you. Okay, a little bit different approach to it. Because Kalani Moku, being seen as the father leader, the Kaikubana of them, and understanding that the historical events that happened right at this time, during 1826, is when the dolphin and the <laughs> came in, and uh, <coughs> because of, there were. And, and found out that, uh, what? We can't have women aboard our ship. There's a new law that prevents that. They got very upset at that. And went to the house of Kalani Moku, broke some windows, and then they saw Bingham, and he went to his house, to the point where Sybil Bingham locked herself in the house to protect him, and then they tried to grab uh, Hiram Bingham to punish him physically, beat him up, because he, he was responsible for this new law that didn't allow women to come on our ships anymore. And the dolphin is an American ship, right? So here is the heat. The dolphin, Captain Percival, is here for one purpose, to settle the debts of the Lee with the merchant. But because his crew are not allowed to have women, he forgets what his purpose is there, and he takes, he takes this other course. Okay. So what was the wrong? The wrong that happened. That's what they're talking about, that incident with the dolphin. Because eight months later, when this letter is written, okay, Another ship comes in, right? And that ship um, is headed by uh, Catsby Jones. And, and what he starts to tell them, he says, okay, yeah, he was wrong, but we need to settle these debts. So, so why is it, look at this and go, okay, this person is not so bad. But they also realize, oh, we have this debt we have to settle. Otherwise, we would lose our kingdom. <laughs> So, second one, no, all that is needed is for you good folks to give us literacy. We learn it, give it us the word of Christ, of God, and when we heed our, 
here are women are prohibited. So this is that idea of not allowing women to come on. For we have learned the word of God, then the foreigners come to fetch them, doing damage to our head. <coughs> I, I translate it as, have you not been upright with us by giving to us the knowledge of reading and writing? And haven't you given the word of God to us? And that we should protect the sacredness of our women? I have learned the word of God and of the foreigners attempt to try and take our land, namely the foreigners of America and Britain. We start to get a sense of this letter now as Kalani Moku, as the statesman, right? As the person who's trying to now take care of his people who are feeling pretty bad after this incident, incident okay? And also the missionaries who also were involved in this. <coughs> Next one says, lest you all become angered, we are to blame for all your wrong and not all of you, your foreigners. Instead, possibility, you are angry. Possibly you are angry. Was it wrong with us or you? <coughs> you foreigners. You know, he's meaning Bingham and company, right? You foreigners were not wrong. That's a pretty strong statement, right? And yet, this incident that happened uh, <coughs> with the, the dolphin um, is going to have repercussions later on. It's going to go actually to the highest levels of the American government. Because the missionary, you know, they are incensed that here we have an American warship come and they attack us, right? And so they're making their contact back to the United States and they're saying, and it becomes a, an ongoing thing. Okay, finally, here's my message according to the word of God. Jehovah, I have given you the heart to God and my spirit of devoting myself to the church for Jesus Christ. I will look, Mr. Bingham, and accompany me at my message, and if you want to write my message to America, to our chief, that is up to you. I translate, here are the words of Jehovah. I have given my heart to God and my body and my spirit. I have devoted myself to the church of Jesus Christ. Examine closely, Mr. Bingham and company, my thoughts, and if you feel that you want to write my thoughts to America, to our chief, to be so who is Kalanimiko? Changes our whole perception of him. Once we start to, and, and I'm sure that even this translation is going to go get many more revisions, which it should be, because that's healthy, right? And we get to know them even better. Because the one value of, I think, of learning from the past, or looking back to the past, is that we learn from past mistakes, but also past triumphs. And one of the things we don't have and haven't had for a long time is the native voice. And this does it. This helps to bring it. Still needs to be contextualized, still needs to be look, looked at from different angles to really to get closer and closer to what was happening and maybe determine the history, but I think it's, it's important. So who is Kalani Moku? He's a statesman. He is the Kaikuana. He is the eldest one whom everybody had, all Ali'i, have <coughs> implicit trust in. He is also the person that the missionaries have implicit trust in. When he dies, they call him the Iron Cable of the Sandwich Isles because he was so strong and everything. Once he says this, this is it. Not going to change. <coughs>